The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace, Bethany Lutheran, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So who has been watching that new NBC show, This Is Us? Barb's hand right up. I see a few of you have been watching it. My wife and I are fairly hooked on it. Uh, We've been trying to catch up the last few weeks. Uh, Now I'm going to attempt to describe some parts of the show in as little detail as possible to avoid spoilers for you. And I want to give you a little warning because my wife and I haven't quite caught up. So if you've seen the last episode, don't tell us what happens, okay? Um, So this show, it follows a family called the Pearson Family. And you have the father, Jack, and the mother, Rebecca. And then they have three kids, Randall, Kevin, and Kate. And the only thing that you really need to know for the purposes of this sermon uh, is that Randall is African American and he is adopted while Kevin and Kate are not. So one of the running themes throughout this first season is Randall trying to figure out his identity. The show will kind of flash back between when they're kids and when they're adults and throughout the whole time Randall struggles with this question of his identity and how does he fit in with his family. And even though it's clear that his parents love him dearly and they they try their best to include him in this family, and even though he's smart and incredibly gifted and talented and he's clearly going places, Randall is really worried, particularly as a child, about fitting in. And part of that is because his brother Kevin is actually a little bit jealous of of Randall's gifts and and what what Randall has. And so Kevin has a hard time accepting his brother Randall. And so they would fight as kids and even as adults in one episode, you see these two grown-up adult brothers get into this childish shoving match on the street and the small crowd kind of gathers around to watch him. And while this is a funny scene, you can kind of tell that there's sort of bad blood between these brothers there's, that's been brewing for a long time. And after this fight, we see, the, we see Randall and Kevin, they're driving home in the car in the awkward silence, and finally they pull up to the house. When Randall tells Kevin, he says, You know, back there, with all those people, it's the first time in 36 years that you said the words, he's my brother. First time in 36 years he said the words, he's my brother. And when Kevin starts to object, Randall interrupts him with two simple words that I think are essential to our our existence as humans. He says, Randall says, claiming me. You never claimed me. And the source of all that conflict and all that bad blood between those two brothers was the fact that Kevin had never claimed Randall as his brother. Today, we hear from the Gospel of Matthew, it's a different story about claiming And this time it's the story of God publicly claiming Jesus in baptism. And if you want to know the truth, people who study and follow Christian theology, they they don't really know quite what to do with this story. Here comes Jesus. He's sinless. He's blameless in the world. And he's coming to be baptized by John. John the Baptist. And you know that John feels awkward about this situation because he tells Jesus... 
listen, I need to be baptized by you. Why are you coming to me? And that's a really good question. Why does Jesus need to be baptized by John? You know, Jesus, theologically speaking, doesn't, doesn't need it. Not the same way we do. He was sinless, right? He, he didn't need his sins washed away. He didn't need baptism in the same way that we say that we need baptism. But Jesus insists. And so John the Baptist, he goes ahead and he baptizes Jesus. And as Jesus is coming out of the water, the heavens open. And a dove comes down and lands on Jesus. And then a voice booms out from the clouds. This is my son. This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Now in this baptism, God claims Jesus as His own publicly. This is my Son, the voice declares. My Son. God publicly claims Jesus, which not only gives Jesus this identity for the people to see, but also sets Jesus out on His path. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, His mission. In this baptism, Jesus' identity is revealed. And in so doing, His purpose on earth is revealed. Right? He's given this name, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, sent to love the unlovable, to bring justice to the poor, and through death give life to the world. And so in a similar way, that, that's what baptism is. It's us being claimed by God as daughters and sons of of Christ. And so in this we receive a new identity, child of God. And in baptism we become part of something bigger. When you look around at the people next to you, these are your brothers and sisters in Christ in this body in this family of God. And so in in so doing, we too are called to bring love and justice and reconciliation to this world. That's what it means to be claimed. That's what it means to be given an identity and a purpose. And that's exactly what baptism is for us. Because like Jesus in baptism, we too are claimed as a part of God's family, the church. We become a part of this big body of Christ, this interconnected, incredibly diverse, this rich tapestry of humanity brought together by the love of God and Jesus. In baptism, we are claimed. We are claimed by a community of people we call our brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you remember, if you remember, that's exactly what Randall had been looking for. It's what Randall had needed from his brothers. It's the words that he hadn't heard him say before. This is my brother. Well, there's a great scene in a different episode, actually, where Jack, Randall's father, is talking to him as he's struggling with some of these questions of identity, as, as, even as an adult. This is as an adult now. And with all the fierceness and love that a father has for his son, Jack tells Randall, The moment I saw you, the moment I saw you, I knew you were my boy. You were my boy. You were not a choice. You were a fact. You were never a replacement. Do you understand? That became a turning point for Randall in the same way that Jesus' baptism was a turning point in his life and our baptisms are a turning point in our lives. Because in those waters we are claimed by God as sons and daughters brought together in this body of Christ. There's a great verse in Isaiah um, that says, I have called you by name, and you are mine. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass by the baptismal font, if you get a chance for communion or after the service, if you're not in the center aisle, I, I, I want to invite you to just dip your fingers in the water if you want, you can mark the sign of cross on, on your head or cross yourself. And I want you to repeat those words to yourself when you do that. 
I've called you by name and you are mine. And so you don't forget, I would like to end just by having you repeat those words after me. I have called you by name. I have called you by name. And you are mine. You are mine. Thanks be to God. Amen.